my name is Roger King. Uh, uh, for the last uh, 15 years, I've been affiliated with a uh, university uh, in a capacity of uh, both uh, academic research as well as uh, teaching. Uh, prior to that, uh, I've been uh, known as a so-called serial entrepreneur, start of many ventures, and uh, uh, happily, I sold many ventures as well. Uh, so, and I also been involved with uh, families, uh, helping uh, my in-law families at different capacity and so forth. So, so this is what I've been doing, and uh, I uh, started my life working in Korea. Uh, in the United States, working for a company called Bell Labs uh, in, a, in a research capacity. And uh, so that was many, many years ago. So many of them will see the private sector, particularly family business, and they're adapting to the high level plans set by Asian governments for future economic development. Yeah. Well, you know, my uh, academic research and uh, focus is really on family businesses as well as, uh, well, I call it Asian family business as well as uh, now family office itself. Uh, let me just give you an example of a, comp uh, a, a government involvement. Uh, recently, the Hong Kong government, where I'm based, uh, uh, set up a uh, uh, academy uh, for wealth and uh, legacy. And the purpose of that is actually to uh, take full advantage of the uh, uh, Hong Kong's uh, uh, financial center, financial center, and also bring in you know the new wealth from uh, different parts of the world. Uh, of course, uh, mainland China today. Uh, I've I've been told that the, there are now more billionaires, U.S. dollar billionaires, in China uh, than the United States. So there's a lot of new wealth coming to uh, uh, this part of the world. And of course, Hong Kong would like to uh, leverage that. And of course, you know, Hong Kong being a, a strategically located relative to uh, uh, mainland China, and we have this notion called Greater Bay Area. So uh, Greater Bay Area uh, includes a city like uh, Shenzhen and Macau and so forth. And actually, uh, so if one looks at it, Hong Kong is the financial center, and uh, Shenzhen is really the technology center itself, and try to bring everything together. Uh, uh, so Shenzhen, as I said, uh, can offer many, many new opportunities from an investment perspective as well as that. So I think the Hong Kong government, together working with the uh, mainland Chinese, uh, trying to uh, leverage that position off, and of course, you know, a lot of these uh, new wealth uh, families are uh, actually, they started their wealth from the uh, family business itself. So we hate you, what role did family businesses play in supporting the agenda of inclusive growth in the economic back? Well, most of the wealth is actually created in the family business itself. And uh, this is, uh, you know, this is the, the uh, uh, where the new wealth is, okay? And uh, of course, you, you know now, uh, uh, especially in mainland China, we're dealing with an issue of uh, transition from one generation, the first generation of wealth, to uh, future generations. So of course, there are many, many challenges associated with that. <laughs> so how can family businesses effectively contribute to the education goals set by Asian governments, especially in the context of business well, first of all, you know, the uh, families can learn from each other. And also, you know, I'm affiliated with a university, a Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And we actually put together programs specifically designed for family members. So they come together to learn from, from us, the lecturers and everything else. But I think they get a lot more by learning from each other, uh, he, you know, because each family does things very, very differently. And uh, uh, this is really a golden opportunity uh, for uh, uh, government to bring everybody together through the universities. And so this new academy that's being set up is going to actually have that opportunity to do that. 
So what strategy sh should family businesses adopt to align with Asian governments focus on environment in order to uh, Sorry, you, could you repeat that? <laughs> yeah. What strategy should family businesses adopt to align with Asian governments focus on environment in order to oh, Okay. So I think, uh, you, you know, the younger generation of uh, most of these uh, new wealth, uh, first of all, the, uh, most of them actually, you know, they went overseas to study and this and that and so forth. And their level of education is very, very different than the, uh, the older generation. So now they're very much into issues that are related to environmental, you know, impact investment and this and that and so forth. In fact, uh, one of the challenges for the new wealth uh, families is that the next generation do not want to join the family business itself. So uh, uh, the family should actually take advantage of the fact that they have a different kind of passion. Uh, the passion is beyond just the family business itself. And so allow them to pursue that passion, whether it's impact investment related to uh, ESGs and so on and so on. So, you, you know, these are things that uh, uh, families can contribute uh, working together with uh, governments as well. But when you see South Africa is how we need to feel that there is a slowdown in the succession or more successes of uh, the Well, I think what happens is this, okay? Uh, the notion of uh, family business, I think it's changing uh, uh, as we move forward. Because as you know, uh, human life cycle is expanding. Uh, you, you probably have uh, uh, people that you know or relatives that are uh, lived uh, to uh, more than 100 years old. But business life cycle is shortening, okay? So within one's life cycle, then you could have many, many business cycles, okay? And, and uh, so the idea is that, you, you know, younger generations, their, their uh, interest is actually slightly different than the old business that was uh, the, the, the created the wealth. So I think the family should use this opportunity to provide them the necessary resources so they can pursue their passion to do different things, which can be uh, very, very helpful for the family itself and expand the, you know, so I call this from family business to business family, where you end up with a, possibly a poor, portfolio of investments and businesses, some of which are managed by uh, next generation itself. Mm -hmm. So how can family businesses in Asia contribute to and benefit from the promotion of good government practices by local governments? Okay, that's a very difficult issue in a way, why I say that. Because Asian concept, uh, you know, culturally we're very, very different than the, the uh, Western culture itself. and. Uh, so when you talk about governance system itself, uh, you know, the Western approach is very, very, uh, uh, I, I tend to say it's very legalistic. Everything has to be written down, this and that and so forth. Whereas in Asia, uh, we have a way of, basically it's understood and you don't really have to, you know, have a legal document to that. And now I'm not saying which system is better, which one is worse, but the fact is that culturally we're very, very different. And we should respect each other's culture and pursue it according to that. Now, if a Western family finds our system useful, why not adopt it? And if we in Asia, our family uh, likes the very uh, uh, legalistic approach, uh, perhaps that's another approach to do it. So I think it's very, very much up to each individual families and how they are, yeah. So how do you envision family-owned businesses and other private sector entity aligning themselves with the strategic frameworks established by Asian governments aimed at fostering future economic growth? Well, I mean, every government, you know, always have this responsibility to elevate the overall uh, uh, well-being of their its uh, citizen itself okay for example we you know we we know for example mainland china over the last 40 years uh you know has 
uh, lifted, I can't remember the exact number, but uh, 800 million people out of poverty are moving up. And of course, you know, this is uh, something that uh, many, many other countries admire and perhaps would like to do that. And all this is part of the, uh, the ecosystem itself. And uh, so the government should provide incentives uh, to allow people to, to move forward and give them uh, you know, the benefit uh, that uh, all, all the families can you know, have the right educational system itself, which is very, very important. And also you know, in this part of the world, uh, uh, the, the, the education is very, very important to us. And the notion of working hard, okay? And uh, so I think government can provide that kind of uh, uh, environment to, to encourage uh, families to, to move up on the economic scale. So you uh, spent a lot of time at the West, and what is key difference that you see, or do you see any difference at all between the Asian run, uh, you know, kind of happy businesses run by the Asians, and we run businesses in the West? Well, Asian family businesses, uh, you, you know, for example, when you talk about Asia, you, you know, if you look at Japan, it's probably, you know, has more uh, century-old family businesses. Uh, and yet, on the other hand, you look at China, one of the uh, uh, things people talk about, Chinese uh, wealth doesn't go beyond three generations itself. You, you know, so you got the uh, extremes. So the, culturally, it's, it's somewhat different, okay? The Japanese system and uh, the rest of uh, uh, Asia are ethnic Chinese. But the, the West also tend to follow, uh, I mean, uh, are, are similar in a way in terms of secession, secession planning itself uh, to the, uh, I would say, ethnic Chinese. But the ethnic Chinese and Asians in general, uh, our culture tend to be much more, uh, uh, things are done on a collective basis. Whereas uh, the uh, Western culture is much more based on individualism. So, you know, we, we but both has, have, uh, in my opinion, because I've been living in the United States for a long time, I was brought up in the States, so um, there are lots and lots of good things about each approach. So I think each family need to look at how they think which is best and so forth. I see a convergence of these two cultures itself, especially the younger ones that uh, from Asia that are uh, educated abroad. Okay, and they come back, they bring back some, some of the Western cultures. So I see convergence of uh, culture uh, or multiculturalism as we move forward. And I, I think that this is actually a good thing for the world. And you see a lot of uh, the migration, as you said, that the new generation is studying overseas. They've uh, seen the world, they've come back and learned some better practices for uh, me or let's say it's like a more innovative. Do you see a lot of aggression uh, in them when they come back to the family business which went wrong? Well, today, you know, uh, several years ago, in uh, the Shanghai Zhao Tong University did a study of returnees. Uh, it turned out that more than 80% of them do not want to join their family business, okay? And it's the family that provided them with the wealth to go beyond, to go overseas to study, okay? So uh, this is something that, uh, you know, the, uh, the Chinese family business continuity is, is, uh, is uh, I would say, I wouldn't say at risk, but it's major, major challenge itself. So the family business, quite frankly, need to uh, accept that and this is another thing that one has to do because traditionally the Chinese uh, family businesses is controlled by the, the matriarch, patriarch, and uh, they tend not to hire professional managers coming in itself. So families now need to think about uh, inviting talented people to join the family firm that are non-family members, okay? So they have to accept that. And uh, also they have to be, uh, uh, able to you know adjust to the changing world all the time because usually most of these 
founders of uh, wealth, uh, quite frankly, are not necessarily well educated because of uh, the number of different issues itself. And so they also need to be quite agile and accept the world is changing and uh, they have to accept that. Uh, some of them, they even have to seriously think about how about selling the family business itself. You know, uh, it's very, very difficult to sell a business when you start it. Uh, you have a lot of emotional attachment to it, but perhaps, you know, uh, you reach a stage where you really can't take it to the next level and uh, perhaps somebody else can take it to the, uh, they like your business and so forth and take it to the next level and move on and let the next generation to pursue their own passion itself. Amazing. So I've been thinking about a few verasses and uh, uh, what are your key takes? Sorry. No. The delegation, the discussions that you've been through in Garasis uh, yeah. the last two days. What are the key takeaways that you would say you're taking back from the Asian Meet 2020? Well, I mean, I, I've attended many, many Harasis uh, uh, meetings itself. So every time I come, there's always a few points that I learn from it or, you know, stimulate my own thinking process itself. And I think this is the reason why I always come back. And, you know, it's, uh, you get to meet people from uh, different culture, different backgrounds, and so forth. And we, uh, the way I look at things is that, what can I learn from attending these things? So if I walk away with two or three new ideas that I can implement in my, whether it's my educational process or bring it back to my family issues and so forth. So, uh, you, you know, that's the reason why I, I've been attending to uh, uh, the uh, Harassas meeting, so I don't know how many years, maybe uh, almost uh, since the beginning uh, when uh, uh, Frank uh, started the uh, uh, program. So what have you taken back this time? Well, this time, you know, it was also interesting because I was making some statements and people were reflecting on my statements itself. And I was thinking to myself, you know, this is a different perspective. And I have to say, oh, well, you know, my perspective and their perspective is not necessarily identical, but let me understand a little bit more, and I'm going to go back and study a little bit more, and uh, whether I change my perspective or merge their ideas into it, uh, I don't know, but it's, it's worth pursuing. Thanks so much for being with us, and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Uh -huh.